Hello everyone and welcome to Ocean Cadence. In our video today, we'll be undertaking the topic of an exhaust valve and explaining the functioning of a MAN BNW design exhaust valve used on board for two-stroke propulsion engines. So, let us start. As we already know that on board the ship for a two-stroke propulsion engine with the upward movement of the piston when the scavenge air already exists within the unit, the scavenge air is compressed up to a certain pressure. Now, when the fuel is injected into this piston chamber, that is the space between the piston and the cylinder where the air is already compressed, it ignites the mixture and thus creates exhaust combustible gases and the energy stored within these gases is what pushes the piston downwards and creates the next stroke of the engine. But the important fact here now is that the exhaust being generated as a virtue of this entire process also needs to be expelled out so that fresh scavenge air can be taken into the unit or the system. Which means that we need to have a pathway or a passage or a mechanism for the exhaust to move out. This is what the exhaust valve does. The exhaust valve creates that interlink between the cylinder that is a unit and the exhaust trunking and the timely opening and closing of this exhaust valve is what allows predominantly the flow out of the exhaust gases from the unit into the exhaust manifold and also its timely operation decides that the scavenge air present within the unit is compressed up to the specific pressure that we want it to be and is not leaked out into the exhaust trunking so that the maximum potential of the fuel or the maximum energy stored within the fuel and this combustible mixture of the fuel and the scavenge compressed air is utilized adequately and the right amount of energy is delivered to the engine. So now, how does an exhaust valve work and how is it timed to perfection? As we know that the exhaust valve will be closed under the pressure of the exhaust gases moving upward or the air being compressed. But traditionally, as I already discussed, that it needs to be closed so that for the compression also to take place without the scavenger escaping out. This is done with an intelligent assembly of air spring and air piston. In addition to this, the opening action or the downward movement of the exhaust valve spindle is created by an operating piston which operates with the help of hydraulic oil that in turn is pressurized by a hydraulic pump which is actuated by a rotating cam attached to a camshaft. Already mentioned, air spring piston and the air spring is actuated by a 7 bar air supply which is coming through the air supply line and the other elements of the exhaust valve contain the guide through which the valve spindle passes, the valve spindle itself which is basically the moving part within the exhaust valve and also attaches itself to the air spring piston and the operating piston and passes through the guide, the valve seat on which the valve spindle goes and sits and creates the ceiling for the exhaust to seal and thus no leaks to happen. The valve rotator which uses the dynamic nature of the exhaust to create a angular rotation of the valve spindle so as to make sure that the carbon deposits do not occur on the seat surface and the exhaust valve is in a clean operational state. In addition, the exhaust wall also contains a damping pin and clearance spacer to create a damping effect upon the expansion of the oil as a virtue of the rising temperature due to operational reasons and as well as a drain line and a drain valve assembly to collect and drain the leakage or the excess or the lubricating oil within the air spring and the air piston side. Now that we are aware about the different parts, let us start to understand about the functioning of the exhaust wall. So now, Given that, I'll consider that we are already aware about the timing of the exhaust valve because we know how a camshaft rotates in synchronization with the main driving shaft having undergone the chain drive and the other elements before and we know that the cam rotates on the camshaft itself. So, when the peak arises, that is the peak of the cam is in the action zone of the actuation unit, the roller will move up and the spring within the actuation unit will get compressed if there is one in the design and this upward movement will then compress or try to compress the hydraulic oil which is already there into the hydraulic pump unit. This oil is coming from the main supply line through different bifurcations. Now, 
once this oil is compressed up to a certain pressure flowing through the line and also going into the zone which is shown in the diagram above the operating piston it then pushes as a virtue of this pressure which is generated due to the restrained passage within the hydraulic pump and then it pushes the operating piston downwards and thus actuating the exhaust wall by pushing the wall spindle downwards and opening the exhaust wall but in its typical state when the exhaust valve is closed it is always closed under the upward pressure of air supply through the air spring and thus the closing action of the air spring piston so let us imagine right now there is no movement within the engine and we want our exhaust valve to be in a typically closed state so the cam would be at an angle of dwell and there would be no residual pressure in the hydraulic loin and thus the air supply which is coming at 7 bar will push air spring piston upward and thus the wall spindle being attached to the air spring piston would also move up and close and once the engine is running as a virtue of the starting process that occurs as explained earlier in our different videos and thus the timing decides when the hydraulic oil is to be supplied in which particular units exhaust wall and thus the opening action takes place as I discussed earlier also as I have emphasized earlier that the exhaust because it has a certain kinetic energy to itself and is also dynamically moving so once it hits the wall of rotator due to the angular position of these wall rotators what it does is it rotates the wall spindle and this is important because we do not want the carbon deposit on the seat and the spindle surface to be uneven or to let's say accommodate heavily on one certain side and not on the other so this rotation clears up the carbon deposit and makes sure that the ceiling is always in a perfect state the heat which is generated due to this entire action or the working of the exhaust wall within the body that is the cage or the exhaust wall unit body is removed by the cooling water or a line simply that comes from the jacket water side and is supplied through the inlet and taken out from the outlet and this flowing water is what removes the heat from the exhaust valve unit whereas for parts such as the guide the heat is removed as a virtue of the oil that is the slight quantity of oil that is supplied with the air supply and cools that particular zone and lubricates it and also the slight leak that occurs from the top piston ceiling side and drips down thus cooling the entire body in case if the pressure build up due to any resistance in the hydraulic circuit that is the actuation circuit between the hydraulic pump and the top operating piston side is too much then the relief valve or the relief assembly that is installed on the hydraulic side of the actuation unit allows the oil to be relieved and thus making sure that no damage is inculcated onto the exhaust valve or the parts of the exhaust valve within the diagram we can also see that the air supply to the valve guide via a control valve is primarily given to cool seal and lubricate the guide part this also makes sure that due to this positive air supply no exhaust leaks into the upward side of the exhaust valve and always maintains a positive pressure thus avoiding any ingress of exhaust into the air spring or the upward side of it in this structure the wall spindle is often made of mnemonic alloys stellite or dsa 760 which is a specific type of alloy that is used in the man bnw engine design specifically the main purpose of using this mnemonic or dsa 760 material is because these are super alloys and have a very high or superb resistance to temperatures and also against corrosion materials such as stellite are also highly resistant to wear and thus have a very specific role to play in the formation of the seats and the spindle ceiling surfaces the valve housing or the main casting of the exhaust valve body is made of cast iron this is because this is a very commonly used fabrication material and has a very high durability as well as the cost effectiveness in some certain places at the flange ceiling portions or the joining portions you might also find the steel being used as a virtue of its resistance to different corrosion and other deterioration aspects the wall seat is made up of molybdenum steel and stellite coating as emphasized earlier due to excellent temperature and wear resistance and 
the valve retainer as well as the cooling channels are also incorporated with different alloys and alloy steel to make sure that their heat dissipation rate is very high and thus the wear down rate and the rate of degradation is also very low. I hope that this clear and detailed understanding helps you to figure out how an exhaust valve works and what are the different components within the exhaust valve and their different roles. If you still have any persisting questions on the topic concerned, please feel free to reach out to us via our channel and post your questions in the comment section. We will be happy to answer them. Also, do make sure to like and subscribe our channel and also share our videos with your colleagues and with your mates. Thank you.